Hey, everybody, your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. And we've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. Today is episode 258, Thrifting, What to Look for and What to Avoid. And you can find today's show notes at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 258. Okay, today's going to be a fun episode because the three of us love to thrift, but I'm sure that we thrift things very differently. I probably look for things much different than um, both Anita and both Kelly and all the way around. So today we're going to get in and dig in, take our bags and our measuring tapes and, and our spy glasses and go thrifting and tell you what things that we look for and that you should be looking for and what things to absolutely say no to. <laughs> mm-hmm. I A love no. thrift shopping. I think everybody knows that if they've been listening. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I was thinking about, you know, why do I love it so much? Well, it's a very creative way to shop. You know, so it's not, it's very easy to walk into a shop that's all styled and beautiful and say, oh, yes, I'd like to take that home off the shelf and then plop it down in my house and I'm done, which is a fun way to shop sometimes and to treat yourself and to, you know, it's just easy. have something beautiful and it's easy, right? Mm-hmm. But when you've got to pick through and maybe go through a box of junk to get to that diamond in the rough <laughs> and then think about maybe how you can transform it or how you can make this seemingly odd piece of decor or what have you fit into what you've got going on and work in your own home. I just think it's such a fun way to shop and it really gets your creativity going. Mm. Well, and we're going on the ultimate thrifting no, trip. <laughs> We're going to the Round round Top Antique Show. Uh, I go every time, but this is Kelly's first time. Yvonne, we've got to get you out there sometime. I know. I'd love to be out there with you girls. I feel bad I'm not going. I know. So we, you know, that is really kind of the ultimate thrifting because there's now some booths are just, especially at Marburger, they're just so pristine. And even at our, we're going to have a booth at Blue Hills that there, the booths are beautiful and everything styled, just like Kelly's talking about. But some of the other places, you know, you have to sort through a lot of junk to find that diamond in the rough. And it's probably covered, we call, it's probably what I would call farm fresh, meaning covered in dirt. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's a lot of fun (laughs) things like that. So yeah. And rusty, crusty, chippy. That's right. Isn't that what else you say? Mm -hmm, Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're going to be at Round Top, be sure and stop by and see us at our booth at uh, Blue Hills and it's bespoke decor dot store. We're bringing our pillows and things. Now we're bringing all new things and, you know, round top has changed now. So that there are a lot of new things also, but it's also got a lot of thrifting things. So let's get back to the vintage things that you have at thrift stores. And I'll tell you one of my very favorite things to get at a thrift store are dishes. And There are so many dishes that people are getting rid of. It's not a popular thing for people to collect so much like it used to be. There's Everybody has all these sets of dishes and there's a lot of estate sales. And actually the thrift store I go to, one of them, there's estate sale agents that set up these estate sales. And then whatever doesn't sell in that sale goes to the thrift store. So I've gotten Limoges dishes more than once. I've gotten dishes, other dishes made in France and other beautiful English dishes. It's amazing what I find. Uh, And we had talked about this in a previous episode, things, you know, your kids don't want these things and instead they send them to thrift stores. So the people who love to thrift and love dishes, that's a wonderful fit. Now, one thing I always look for when I go to a thrift store is I look for silver and silver plate. I don't Mm -hmm. mind silver Mm -hmm. plate. Mm -hmm. And if you need a new set, a new to you set of um, flatware, think about going to a thrift thrift store and getting some um, silver plates, uh, silverware. It's gorgeous. And Mm -hmm. you can get it very quite reasonably. And it's often just so much better. So, so more um, beautifully made and the quality is so much better. 
Oh, I so agree with you. And I've done this so many times. I've even found hotel silver, which is so collectible. That's my at fave. The thrift store. Mm-hmm. I know. I I also wanted to back up for a minute and talk to you about which thrift stores to go to because they're not all the same. Oh, good idea, Anita. That's a they're, great place to start. They're not all equal because I find so many amazing things and I get emails all the time saying, how did you find this? Because they never have stuff like this at my thrift store. Well, there is a secret to it that I found where I live. And I'm going to tell you what it is because I live in the land of thrift stores. I'm in an old part (laughs) of town in Houston called the Heights. And there's thrift stores all over the place because there's people that are, you know, there's older people where they have estates and there's a lot of old stuff that people are getting rid of. So if it's a thrift store and they only take donations, then it's going to be full of things that are broken, chipped, Mm -hmm. damaged, mostly stuff that you probably don't really want. The trick is to find a thrift store that accepts consignments. Those are the thrift stores that have the good stuff. And the prices are going to be a little bit more, but they are going to have really nice things because people know they can make money taking their things there, whereas the other places just accept donations. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my big tips. I think you're so right, Anita. We have a couple of stores that take donations, and I, I avoid those. And we have some really nice shops around here that are like, um, you know, new to you kind of shops, those nice kind of uh, more upscale thrift shops. And that's where you will find the better quality items and a lot Mm -hmm. of furniture and um, things that, that you would probably like in your house. Let's talk, Anita, about, and Kelly, what you need to take with you, though, when when you go into a thrift store, if you're looking for something. Let me just jump back to what we were talking about. You know, all all thrift stores are not created equal. It's also a very uh, geographically Mm -hmm. uh, divergent, shall I say? Yes, Yes, Yes. you're right. Uh, Because people can't believe what I find here. Mm -hmm. Um, And I go to both ones that are strictly donation, I, you know, just pull up, open up your trunk and chuck it out kind of places and other places where they actually will send out an appraiser and decide whether or not they're even going to take your donation. Yes, so exactly. We run the scale here and some of my fave is one that's combined and they do both those things. And that also there is something that I think is countrywide that goes on is the independent Thrift stores, maybe for your local hospital or a charity mm-hmm. or something yes. like that. Like the, mm-hmm. the and those are the ones like- I'm talking about. The and so am I. Organizations that have the really the like the the guild here. I don't know. It's like Junior Forum. I don't know. There there are things like that. Now, see, like that. in my neck of the woods, they're privately owned, so we don't really have any like that that are connected to a hospital, but I live out in the country and we're thrift store poor around here. We do have a few very nice ones, but we just don't have tons of them, but we do have a lot of like, you drop it off and they'll take anything. But you can probably just drive up to a barn somewhere and they're throwing stuff well, out, right? And this is what I was going to say in my area. I may not have a Berger chair, but I get antique shutters and architectural pieces. And in our last home, we got a beautiful barn beam that became the mantle of our um, fireplace because it was chestnut and chestnut used to be everywhere in Lancaster County, but a blithe took out all the chestnut. So if you're getting barn beam chestnut, you know, it's very old. So, so Kelly, mm-hmm. um, do you shop in the places you go to? Are they in Pasadena? Are they in LA? Where are you going? She's going to the Rose Bowl, baby. Oh, is <laughs> yeah. it a Rose Bowl? But that's but, but that's again a whole nother ball of wax than thrifting. Mm-hmm. No, most of my thrift stores are all in Pasadena. Oh, okay. Pasadena is a wonderful, you know, you may have heard the song, The Old Lady from Pasadena. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of them and they have a lot of cool stuff that ends up in these thrift stores. Mm-hmm. So they, make friends with that little old lady. Yeah, before it gets out of her house, right? Um, I hope someday, I aspire to be a little old lady from Pasadena someday. I hope but so for one, you too. 
Thank you. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is, um, which I think is c- sort of countrywide, is yes. So we have these independent thrift stores, like the ones my girls and I um, have volunteered at. We have locally, but that one's mostly closed. Thank goodness, or I would never get out of there. Um, but when you go to a Goodwill or a Salvation Army, it isn't necessarily stuff that people in your neighborhood have just dropped off. They tend to have all the donations go to some centralized warehouses. And, and then they're they usually, t- that's the stuff I find it's, it's broken and damaged. Well, they divvy it up. Mm-hmm. Well, we get so it goes to some here. central location yeah. where there's a big warehouse, you know, probably in in the particular state or something like that, and then they funnel it out. Oh, you know, this sells better in Pasadena. Oh, this sells better mm-hmm. in Houston, something like that, and the stuff gets moved around that way. So that tends to be a little bit more um, catch as catch can. You can't really rely on what mm. you're getting there as far as you know quality. But I still do really well at those stores. Really? It's one it's, thing that I think you can mm-hmm. find at Goodwill and I is picture frames. Okay. They it are in our area. We just tend to have so many picture frames at Goodwill. So I don't go to thrift stores for them. That's where I'll go to find my picture. Just empty picture frames, or be, or or I'll take out the old painting at if the it's a guild. Great frame. At the guild in Houston, the mm-hmm. guild shop, uh, which is, I can't remember what women, what organization, you know, charity organization it's associated with. They have the coveted dish room full oh. of dishes and silver. I know it's my favorite room. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> well, let's, let's dive in and let's just talk about what to take with you to thrift. And then we're going to talk about what to look for and to avoid. So uh, the first thing I say is take a measuring tape. Good and idea. make sure you mm-hmm. should always have that in your bag. Yes, I always have that in my purse. It sits in with my mate, my little zipper compartment that has your makeup on it. You know, you can keep a compact and some lipstick and your measuring tape. So you'll want to take a measuring tape because you want to make sure that you measure twice before you purchase anything. Is there anything else you girls take? Uh, no, I take my, my checkbook, key, my keen eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also That's take not even my take. checkbook anymore. They're cards. No it's all cards now. I also yeah. well, if you take cash, I can get a better discount at oh, my thrift my, stores. No, it doesn't matter. Oh no, my thrift nobody stores, pays cash here. Yeah. yeah. Now my thrift stores. I mean, you might want to ask because they always ask, "Can you do better?" And they can do at least ten percent if you give them cash. Um, in my area. But the other thing I take is I have all the pictures of my room. I mean, obviously I blog and I know how important taking pictures are to get a good eye. So I've got all these pictures and I also take pictures of all my fabrics. Um, What I wouldn't buy at a thrift store is anything wooden, like a wooden that would be in touch with food. Like I have heard uh, people buying collecting wooden spoons from thrift stores and places mm-hmm. like that. If you want to put them on display, I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't use those mm-hmm. for cooking. Yeah, that's interesting you say that because I collect the wooden breadboards. And I don't get them from thrift stores, but right. I get them from antique places. And I'm always... I think they're gorgeous. I do display things. But if I put actual food on them, I put some sort of barrier between my food and the board because I don't know where it's been. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I I think that's very true. And so, yeah, I use, you know, like wax paper or some sort of parchment paper or something to definitely separate food from from those old bowls and platters. Yeah, I agree. I think that's that's a good point. And silver candlesticks, that's something I found that people just kind of get rid of. I think uh, people don't, there's a lot of people that don't appreciate them and they end up at the thrift store and I just love to gobble those up. Those are beautiful. All the carving and everything, they're beautiful. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health. Potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. 
Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt green chef is a delicious delight any time of year but especially during the holidays what a wonderful vision to behold of the green chef boxes on your doorstep green chef is the number one meal kit for eating well And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. In our area, we have a lot of um, architectural stores because we have a lot of old buildings, very colonial around here. And I can get so many um, um, beautiful corbels and just pieces of woodwork and architecture that, and see that just, that sings to me. So if that's something you like, look in your area that have, that, um, um, for, for places that have all these great architectural pieces and you can get them for a song. I mean, at one point I was thinking about putting a fake, um, fireplace mantle, the whole nine yards in our bedroom and I could get an antique fireplace for under $400. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they have those at at Round Top, actually. I've seen a lot of those. Uh, Another thing I love buying at the thrift store are vintage lamps. And I've gotten quite a few that are really pretty. And the the secret to making those look like they work now is I almost always have to change out the lampshade. But once you change out the lampshade, they a lot of them look really fantastic and very unique because you know they're not like something you can buy now. Anita, do you change out the electric the electrical sockets on those? Uh well, I mean it depends. Not I mean not unless I see an issue. Uh-huh. Do you always do that? Well, that's my cautionary tale on those. Is, oh, really? Well, you know, you just never know. I usually just eyeball it. And if it doesn't look too old and too wrinkly, you know, too sort of sometimes the wire is all twisted around and stuff. And it just looks like, a, you know, an electrical hazard waiting to happen. So <laughs> if I just passed on two at the Rose Bowl, albeit not a thrift store, but we were there the Sunday before and they were these fabulous lamps that I could have used in Ava's room. But then when I looked at them, first of all, she had no outlet there. So if, uh, to even try them to see if they worked at all, I mean, obviously if they don't work at mm. all, that's bad. If, if they work and then they burn your house down, that's really bad. But yeah, that's, uh, really so, bad. that's really bad. So I said, no, 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 Tragic. Ava, we will keep looking, you know, and maybe we'll just find something at home goods or something like that to be on the safe side. But I have definitely purchased vintage lamps before that just look like they the the wiring is still in pretty good shape nothing frayed you know mm-hmm. not you don't want the the socket sort of dangling over where you know you're like oh I'll put some duct tape on it it'll be fine you know and then you <laughs> plug it in 
And most of them don't have you know, a three-way plug or anything like that. So that's true. If you purchase one, and unless it, if it's the idea of, oh, I got this lamp for 10 bucks, that's so awesome, then you're not going to want to spend what you'd have to spend to get it rewired because it isn't cheap. And there's usually just like a few people, or even if you're lucky enough to have one in your town that will do a rewire job. Uh, we have a couple of lighting stores here that will do that, but you're talking probably at least over a hundred dollars to have it mm. redone properly. So you kind of have to weigh that. And, I have you know, a- what, how risk averse are you? I have mm-hmm. one little lamp that I keep in my closet and to, to tell you the truth, if we go on vacation or something like that, I make sure that thing is unplugged in the just in case department. Mm, I have a a story about that. Now I wasn't at a thrift store. I was at an auction and we came in late. So usually you can look at all the things that are being auctioned off beforehand. And it was during the big rooster phase, um, you know, like 20 years ago or more. So (laughs) I saw this, it was such a cool lamp. It was a rooster lamp. And it was so cool and it had this big, it had a drum shade on it. So you know how old that must have been because that was like mid-century modern. And I thought, oh, I've just got to have this lamp. It's so cool. So I kept bidding on it and bidding on it. And I did win it, but I think I spent $35, which was way more than I wanted to spend, but I loved it so much. So I went up to get it. There was no back to it. It was all broken. It was just like the front shell. <gasps> like a oh, facade. Oh, that's not fair. No, I know. Hey, buyer beware. That's that's the Oh, I guess, but yeah. I mean that's not that's not nice. What I look for with my keen thrifting eye mm-hmm. is good bones. Mm-hmm. I have that down the for the first thing on my list. Yeah. Good bones. Exactly. Good bones mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. real materials. So yeah, yes. I'm just going to stay away from the plastics I'm yep. mostly. And yes. I'm going to look for things that don't necessarily need to be in their col- in their current color. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if they have great bones, that is something that I'm going to zero in on and figure out whether or not, you know, I need to bring that home with me. And oh, usually it's smaller idea. items these days for me, but there was a time when I was looking for bigger things. And then, you know, I can't mm-hmm. pass up my little side tables and little dinky chairs and whatnot like that. Right. But right. it's sometimes you just need a little shop and fix. And if you mm. can get a bag full of stuff for, you know, like $16 and 44 cents, like I'm so uh. down with that. <laughs> uh. Man, you got some good prices there. Well, I'll tell you what I have just done so well with too are old botanical and architectural print uh, framed pieces that are gorgeous. And, you know, there's so much bad artwork out there. Oh, don't we know it? Remember when we were in Texas and we were searching for the artwork for the the house we were styling? Oh, how painful was that? Well, and I'm reminded of a lot of artwork that I had in my house in the 80s. And the uh, 90s. These uh, are things that I just would like to pretend never happened. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of bad artwork out there, but there's some amazing things. If, if The places I go to, they have some really old things. I mean, these are probably about 100 years old. I've saw some beautiful architectural prints from Paris. So beautiful. And I, I grabbed those up. In fact, one time there was, I, I mean, I could tell from the age of it because I look at antiques a lot. There was... I know it was an original painting and based on the clothing this man was wearing, it was probably from around 1820. It was such a well done portrait. It was expensive, but it was, it was obviously authentic and uh, you know, just something like that. You can't just go anywhere and find something like that. No, you cannot. And those, and I think those type of things, I tend to get, I love art in museums and other people's homes. I get tired of them in mine but something like that would be a piece that you could keep forever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Really beautiful. And architectural renderings, I adore. Unfortunately, Me too. there are not many of them around here because I think people snatch them up. Mm-hmm. And maps. Exactly. They're hard to There's find. There's a lot yes. of old maps out there. And that's pretty cool. You know, particularly if you can find a map of your area or a place oh, that you like I to vacation love- or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's really great. And I you know, love don't, like be, mm-hmm. yeah, don't put up, be put off by the frame that it may or may not be in. A person mm-hmm. may have put it in a frame that you wouldn't have used. So, you know, just, just 
ditch the frame. Probably the entire thing is going to cost you a fraction of what something like that would cost True. in a in a vintage map shop or you know a vintage print shop. Those sorts of things are really expensive. Has anyone you know those big? Um, they're not posters. They're like, you know, art posters. The really big ones yes, that are really yes. thick and almost mm-hmm. painted. Those things go for sometimes thousands of dollars. So, you know, you, you may not be in that category, but something that you're, you're getting, like we have a map of Pasadena that was here in the house and so cute. Dean, the former owner, he had it framed and it's really a lovely frame, but that's the one I told you I didn't like the mat. So the frame was great. Um, I took the, it all apart and then I just spray painted the mat because it was purple and I spray painted it black. I was uh, going to say gold. Yeah, but I did it black and I put it all there. But he had put a little purple star, like when you would get oh. on your homework, you know, yes. th- those little stars, you know, oh. and he had put one right where our house is on it, the map. It's oh. so precious. So oh. of course I had, I love that. I had to keep well, that. It's interesting you say that because I've done the opposite so many times where the artwork is very meh. But the uh-huh. frame is mm-hmm. incredible. And I just pop out the artwork and throw it away because the frames are amazing. Right. Yes, it really depends. But don't be don't be hit put off by whatever either the artwork or the frame. If one mm-hmm. works, then you're just gonna change out what doesn't. Yeah. And here's a here's what to do if you're looking for something, let's say you're looking for silverware. Let's just give that for, as an example. I I want you to to make your eyes filter out everything else. And I'm really good at this in a thrift store. You, I go sometimes in there and I just get like overload because I love everything or everything is so interesting to me, except those dolls that really freak me out. You know, those <laughs> baby dolls. And you know, so yeah, all, avoid the dolls speaking mm-hmm, of which. section. Yeah, that, yeah, we don't want. Um, so I try to block everything else out and just like a filter. And all I'm looking for is the silver, the silver, the silver. So my eye becomes very keen at looking for that. Or if you're looking for a special kind of dish, like white ironstone, block everything out because it can get so overwhelming. You can be passing up some of the exact things you're looking for. Right. This is a funny little story. I was with a thrift shop thing with my daughter, Laura, and she loves to do this too. And uh, we were going through it and I was just kind of like, you know, through the, <laughs> through the aisles. Uh-huh. And I think it was one that has like clothes in it too. Cause they're always looking like for some funky vintage clothing and whatnot. Like, but I was in the housewares department and she said, mom, you're like those, um, detectives at CSI when they spray that <laughs> stuff and they can see the blood. <laughs> you can like, smell yeah. it, honey. You can I- smell a good bar. You like you have that like light, you're like oh, good materials. No, nice I'll bones. tell you, I'll tell you what you are. You're a divvy. Do you did you ever watch Love Joy? No, no, you didn't watch Love Joy. No, what is what? that? What? Well, it was about this antique dealer in the UK. Oh no! How, How did we, we miss that? I gotta write this down. Love I Joy. Love, and now it was. Oh my goodness. Well, it's from like the nineties, but even in reruns, I just loved watching it. He 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 was what they called a divvy. A he could spot an D-I-V-Y? authentic. I don't know how you. I, okay. I don't know how you spell it, but it was okay. called. It was called a divvy, okay. and he could spot any authentic piece of whatever. I mean, he would be looking at all this stuff, and they had auctions all the time. But he would know if it was some rare piece of whatever. Oh. You know, he always knew everything. You know, like he could spot it. And then was there? It was wow. it just about that, or was it like then there was some sort of mystery where like the lady had actually been you know, clubbed to death with her candlestick. Well, there were usually, usually (laughs) every episode had something where he was being chased and pretty much he would be, uh, you know, have no money at the end of every episode. Wow. (laughs) Sounds like like us on a thrifting trip. (laughs) Exactly. Like an antique stealer on the run. Wow. Yeah, he was kind of, yeah, okay, I gotta was, look for that. There was usually some intrigue and there was a lady love, Lady Jane. Never ever even oh. heard of that. Was I can't be oh. a Well, I it Sounds like a PBS show. I don't know if it was PBS, but it was yeah, maybe it was. I'm it, So if you know Lovejoy Write to us and tell us where we yeah, can find Yeah, tell me it. I'm not the only one that watched Lovejoy. Uh, the other thing, let's go back to our list. The other thing I think you can find, especially in this area, is great 
outdoor furniture, like, you know, wrought iron pieces and pieces of fencing that, you know, wrought iron that are beautiful or bistro tables and chairs. So don't overlook those because some of those are so well made. They're made very thick and they're made to last um, and they're made a lot better quality than you could buy today. Yeah, that's a great idea. And here's another one. In our area, we have like outdoor statuaries and things that are made out of concrete or stone or urns or you know, like a dog sitting that's about the height of a real dog. We can find those everywhere. Oh, lucky you. Mm-hmm. And they're it's not so- that expensive. So if you can find one of those in your area, that's something not to pass up. It's such a unique look. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Yeah, so I would avoid, we haven't really spent a lot of time on things to avoid, so let's talk about that for a minute. I would say anything that has any kind of odor, smells like smoke or anything else, oh, uh, untoward, yes. do, I mean, I Especially won't even touch smoke. it. Especially <laughs> smoke. A book can smell a little musty, but if it smells like smoke, you'll bring, your house will smell like that. I was going to say, if there's any kind of insect activity, you know, oh. check for that, because oh. that can be bad too. Yes, it can yeah. be very bad. Like that if there's a hole bad. or something. I just it. really steer clear of textiles in general. You know, I mean, it's very of rare what? that you're going to, I, I kind of steer clear of a lot of textiles. You have to be pretty oh, textiles. careful. Unless it's well, feed sacks or, you know, grain sacks and things like that. You know, I, in general, but I know you collect old hankies like I do. And old embroidered things that are really hand done that are beautiful. So I, I, I agree with you. For the most part, but there's a few exceptions like some of these antique linen, especially embroidered sheets. I I go in the in the napkins, the tablecloths, all these embro- if they're embroidered in linen, I I just I can't I can't turn. Well, away. you know, Anita, we can't find those around here, or at least maybe I'm too Usually far out European. of a big city. That's yeah, exactly right. So you're not going to find them where you are because it's more the farm folks. So I go on Etsy. 
to find my beautiful, um, like I have a, I have a gorgeous, I think it's cotton. We had talked about this before embroidered, thick embroidery, French. You were saying it might be linen, but I think it's cotton because I know how linen feels and I know how it, the hand, how it is, the hand of it is. But I went on Etsy to find some of those and I've, and there, if you find a reputable dealer, they don't usually have stains unless they say on there, you know, they'll tell you how it, how it truly is. But you, a lot of the sheets and things right. were well taken That's care of. That's what I'm saying. They the, were, were not exposed to a lot of uh, gross stuff that we don't want to talk about here. Right. But this is, but today's thrifting. So we're not, so it's not going through a hand of a dealer who's going to clean it up and make sure and right. also vet it for you. So this is like, you're at a thrift store. Sure. Little hankies. I just bought a set of, um, uh, yeah, this like little doily things, you know, that I think, oh, maybe I'll make something out of that sort of thing. Like stuff like that. You can come home and toss in your washer. I'm talking mm-hmm. about like pillows. Usually pillows at a thrift store are gross anyway. Oh, no, no. Those, no, run, you know, run, I mean, run. They might be, you know, so, and I, sometimes I look at them and it kind of breaks your heart. It's like, maybe it's a needle point and you think, how many hours did this person put into that? But now it's all sort of pilly and there might be something pulled out of it. And it just looks like, you know, it has definitely a bad patina of time on it. I would stay away from stuff like that, especially something that you couldn't put in on the sanitary cycle or you know, small things. Mm-hmm. I would, people do buy antique rugs. That would not be something I would do. There's mm-hmm. just too yeah, much careful. potential too many for disaster. Things that you're not at a thrift store, again, at a reputable dealer. Right. So, and another yeah. thing is a lot of times there's broken dishes. And here's my thought on that. In general, if it's broken or chipped, I avoid it. There are a few exceptions. If it is really, really old and really, really unique, I will waive that. Uh, because some of these pieces, I have a lot of purple transfer wear and it's very hard to find it in pristine condition. So I have bought some pieces that have some chips here or there, but they're just so beautiful. I, I bought them in anyway, and they're very, very old. Um, yeah. I'm but, not chip averse at all. I, you have to balance the, um, the piece with the, thing, you know, but and if I, it's something that's 20 year old, 20 years old and it's chipped, no, I'm not buying yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the, but the patina of time sometimes involves some crazing, which I love or crackling. Oh, that's and I okay. love and a chip here or there. <laughs> eh, what can you do? The wow. other thing mm-hmm. in a thrift store that you can look for is flow blue. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, that's never, I never see that. Now, see, store. I can find a piece occasionally wow. around okay. here and that the, and the dealers might get it in a big box or something in there, just selling it because they got a really good deal on it. And flow blue is very expensive. Yes. And I have a couple pieces I've gotten from thrift stores. Now they're a little more than you'd spend for your other dishes, but if you can find that it's so, oh, they're just like a, that is a diamond in the rough. So if that has a crack on it, that is fine with me because I love Flow Blue. Yes. Well, you can tell we are very engaged talking about vintage things. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of opinions, a lot of experience uh, going to thrift stores. So this is something that uh, we all love. So remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Thanks so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, then subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. 